Hey there, it's Janie, and we're working on the final part of the Zappos web scraping project in BA222 Business Analytics. Here I'm going to be showing you how to complete the analysis described in the first question for our, our analysis. So before I move into my spreadsheet, I like to copy and bring the question into the space that I'm working in so that I don't have to jump back between documents. It also gives me an easy place to check and compare to make sure I've done everything that's on the list that I'm supposed to do. So I start by copying the text from the Google description in the project doc, and I paste it into this Excel sheet. Now that I have it in this Excel sheet, I'm going to maximize Excel so that I'm, you know, because I don't need a Google Doc anymore. This big long line of text is a little unruly and not that easy to use. So what we're going to do are merge a series of cells, everything in row 1 between A and H. We're going to use the merge function, and then it looks like half of it's chopped off, but it's not. And then you're going to select wrap text and wrap the text. It doesn't look much better, but it will when you drag the row so that it's large enough to hold all of your text. And now we can see clearly and in front of us the instructions that we need to do for this part of for this question. So we're going to create a pivot table showing how average price, overall rating, percent, five stars, comfort, style, true to style, and true to width, right? In other words, all of our variables vary by brand. Use our brand as the rows and the average of the variables as the values. Apply conditional formatting data bars to each column of the table to look for patterns. Discuss what you see in a text box. So that means that we need a pivot table. We need brands as the rows going this way. And then up here, as our columns, we need the variables. So let's hop back into our cleaned data and insert that pivot table. I'm going to start at the top and with my cursor in any cell of the data, Excel will know what data to use for the pivot table. So under insert, I choose pivot table and then it wants to know a couple of things. First, where's the data that needs to go into this table? And you can see this little living green line. Because the cursor was in a cell, that's part of that data, Excel knows automatically that we want to use the, all that data in the table. The second thing it wants to know is where to put this pivot table. We're going to put it in an existing worksheet because I want it in A1. So I'll click on A1 and then here right below my instructions I'm going to insert my pivot table. Then you can see that the pivot table comes up and the pivot table fields. And it's in by manipulating what we put in these fields that we can affect how our table looks. So we want our brand as the rows. So I'm going to grab brand. I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to drag it into rows. And then I want all the other variables as the values. So I'm going to put them in a, the order that makes most sense to me. I want price first. And then I want average comfort rating and average style rating because I, I just think intu intuitively that those things should go together. And then I want... Wait, just kidding. Overall rating. <laughs> I think overall rating actually needs to go before comfort and style. So if I put them in the wrong order, like I've done here, I can actually drag them into the order that I want them in. So now I've got some of price, some of overall rating, some of average comfort rating, some of average style rating, and then percent five stars. I think I would actually like that one under the sum of overall rating. And then let's do true to size and true to width. If you take a look at all these numbers, you know, sum of price, that's 
but that how Excel gets that number is it adds the price of every Adidas shoe together. Right, so here it added up all the overall ratings for every shoe together, and that's not particularly useful, right? We'd be much more useful if we could know the average price. So that's why up here I asked to you to use the average of the variables as your values. So this is what I mean by that. It starts off by giving you not the average, but for each of these, we're going to click on that little information sign and then say, oh, I want the average. And I click OK. And then the price changes to the average. I'm going to do that for each of these. So sum of overall rating, I want that to be average. So now my average rating is in the fours, three, four, right? That makes sense. Shoes are 93 to 120, you know, in these ratings. Now they're starting to be in numbers that we relate. Sum of percent five stars, we want that to be the average. So we can, so let's talk about that in a minute. Let's just go through these. Comfort rating, average. We're going to change all of them. True to style. What? And true to width. And then I'm going to close this up, the pivot table field. I'm going to back out so you can see everything. But once I do a little bit of formatting, I can, I can make it larger then. So what can we do to make these better? One thing that we can do is format them in a way that makes sense for the value that they are. So for price, price is in dollars. I'm going to highlight them, and under the Home tab, I'm going to click on Currency. Average of overall rating, that's expressed in stars. I want that to be a number with two decimal places. And then average of five stars, average style rating, and I'm sorry, not average style rating, average shoe to size and average shoe to width, all of these are percentages. I'm holding down control as I highlight these so that I can highlight multiple sections at once. And these are all percents. And I'll give that one decimal place, but it says what percent of people gave it five stars? What percent of consumers said it was true to size? What percent said it was true to width? And then our other two comfort ratings, I'll treat the same way that I treated overall ratings. I'll highlight them and format them as a number. So I'm going to change the names of these variables just to make it a little bit tidier. I'm going to call this just average price. I'm going to call this overall rating. Pivot table field name already exists. Okay, I'm not going to screw around with that. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to wrap the text. You can change it if you want. It's not you won't be graded on that specifically it's more the grading is more about creating an aesthetically pleasing package that's easy to know what you did just when I glance at it and then to have a little tidy text box down below where you explain the interesting thing that you found right I just want it to be you know easy in business we act as though we're communicating with somebody you know a CEO or a manager or somebody who has a lot of things to think about and they just need the gist as quickly as possible so these, I'm going to wrap the text, and then I'm going to take all of those rows, you know, all those columns, and I'm going to make them a little bit narrower. Then I'll make the row a little bit taller, and I think that's pretty tidy looking. Then, because it really does make me feel better, I'm going to center those variables. All right, so we made the pivot table. This is what it's supposed to look like. In the table, we can get a sense for, you know, who, what price, what shoe brand has the highest price point. Oh, we can look and see Hoka 1-1 has the highest price, right? You can do that for any of the variables. 
Tables are nice because if you want to look up some data, it's easy to find. But the downside with tables is that our brains don't look at these and see patterns. That's not the way we work. But there are some things we can do in Excel that reveal the patterns that exist in this data. And we're going to use conditional formatting to do that. So I'm going to start by highlighting all the prices. I would love to know, you know, easily with a glance, which of these are high price and which of these are low priced. So under conditional formatting, I'm going to go to data bars. And I'm going to choose, since I put my text in green, I'm going to choose green. You know, be your own Excel artist. Just make sure that it's legible. Don't pick too dark of colors, right? Like nothing. You stick in the first or maybe second row in terms of darkness. All right. I'm moving on. In this first column here, you can see immediately which shoes have the highest average price, Poco 1-1 versus Nike that has the lowest. Sometimes to get a sense for how things rank up, you might want to sort them. So if you click on the row labels, there's a sort option. You want to sort by, and if you click on that, you can pick any of these columns. Average price is what I'm going to pick. And then I'm going to say that I want it in ascending order. If you click ascending and it puts it in descending order, just click the other one. Excel versions can be inconsistent. But now we can see there's a nice, tidy, little, obvious gradation from the lowest price to the highest price shoe. I'm a little surprised to see that Nike is the lowest average price for men's running shoes. And Hoka 1-1, which is a relatively new brand on the market, is the highest price. We're going to take this approach and do it to each individual row. You have to do it one row at a time. If you try to do it all at once, it won't work. And I'm going to add the conditional formatting data bar. Here we can see right away that the highest rated shoe is ASICS, right? Adding the visual makes it easy. And you can scan and see that New Balance is the lowest at 3.83. If I want to do a sort again, I can sort by average overall rating. And now we can see that New Balance is the lowest and ASICS is the highest. Brooks, Adidas Running, and Hoka 1-1 make up that top ranking. But an interesting thing is that we can see that ASICS has quite a high rating, but the price is relatively low, right? In fact, I think that the highest rated shoe is actually the second least expensive shoe as a category. If we do the same thing here the average of five stars. Then I'm going to take a look at comfort rating and style rating. So taking a look here, percentage of five stars, why do we have that in addition to the overall rating you might want to know? One thing is that it can give you a sense of how dispersed the data is. Like if we compare um, both of these, Adidas and New Balance have really close to half of their consumers rated at five stars. But then if we look at Adidas, we can see that they have an overall higher rating than does New Balance. And that's an example of if the same percentage of people rated it with five stars, in order to get that average lower than the Adidas average, there have to be a lot of one star ratings. So we can glance at that and say, huh, you know, New Balance must have more strongly dissatisfied customers than does Adidas, right? Adidas probably has more customers that rate it a four or a three than a one. We can take a look at comfort and style. I'm interested to see the relationship between comfort style and our overall rating. So I'm going to start by comfort. I'm sorry, I'm going to start by overall rating. So we can see that ASICS has the highest overall rating and that it's one of the top for both style 
and comfort actually. And then we can see true to size, and true to width give us a sense for more or less whether people are having to send them back to get new sizes. So what sticks out for me when I look at this table is that A6 is a pretty good buy, right? It's got a relatively low price, but the highest overall satisfaction rating the largest percentage of people, 68% of people who bought their shoes and responded on Zappos gave it a five-star rating. It's the highest by far. And it ranks quite highly on comfort, and it actually ranks quite highly on style. People who buy those shoes believe them to be stylish. So that's what I see here. And I'm going to communicate that in this new text box that I'm going to insert down here. I'm going to say what stands out to me in this data is that A6 is the highest brand it's always so hard to sit down and think of what you want to say, right? It's not easy for me. A6 shoes are among the least expensive and the highest and the most highly rated. while other expensive brands, here I see Hoka 1-1 and Brooks, they're pretty expensive, and those are the other two that are rated really highly. While other expensive brands have slightly higher ratings for comfort and style, A6 seems to be a good bet at a relatively low price point, right? Those are your bargain shoes. That's what this set of data makes me think of. I am just going to color that green and then zoom in just a little bit so you can see it better and then I'm gonna call it done. All right, let me know if you have any questions.